very good. So on a more serious note, we're going to have a talk now about in-process analytical data management, DuckDB. I would like to have a big round of applause for Dr. Hannes. Please come to the stage. Thank you very much. Hi, guys. Uh, super excited to be here. Uh, it's not very often that I just, you know, vote across town to go speak to people, and uh, today has been really exciting. Um, because it's, um, yeah, it's, I think, really exciting for me to talk to you about a DuckDB, but also just, um, you know, really, really happy to get to talk about things that we have been working on for so long. And I have to make a small correction. I'm one of the founders of DuckDB. The other one is Mark Rasfeld, who's sitting up here. And it's like very much a sort of, you know, two people sort of thing that we, that we started there. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about the rationale of DuckDB, a bit like the story behind. And I'm going to give you some demos, if uh, there's time. And I'm also going to you know, show you a never-before secret new project that we've been working on. Um, so uh, you know, stay tuned. So for some background, um, this is a very, very, very unexciting looking building in Amsterdam. It's the CWI, the Dutch National Research Lab for Computer Science and Mathematics. Although the mathematics people say it's the other way around. Um, and who knows what happened in this building? Python was invented, um, and I, we happened to work. We happened to work there uh, some some years ago, Mark and I, in a, a group that was doing data management research, and we talked to a lot of data science people. I'm sure, even though this is like the wrong franchise, you have maybe have heard of Hadley Wickham. He's one of the guys that is really active in R, and we talked to him about databases, and then he put this like on the internet, this statement, right? You know, if your data fits in memory, there is no advantage of putting it into a database, it will only be slower and more frustrating. And that really hurt our feelings. Okay. <laughs> and we go like, OK, we can now hate Hadley, or we can actually think about why databases are frustrating. And we have kind of, here we have two guys, and I know I'm old, and this movie is even older, but uh, there's the good, and then there's the bad. We'll start with the bad. Uh, databases are frustrating because you have to install them, or you have to, even worse, you have to kind of bribe your admin with pizza or something to install them. Um, then you have to bribe them even more to maintain the thing, you know, upgrade a version or whatever. Um, and then you also have to, this very annoying uh, problem of getting data in and out of them. And this is something that uh, is one of these things that gets you as your data set gets bigger. Now everything is like happy, happy for small things, but then as it gets bigger, it becomes really frustrating. And we actually wrote a research paper a couple of years ago and why that is, if you're interested in why that is, check it out. However, there's also a lot of good things about data management systems, like query optimization. is what this thing where you know, we take the, um, sort of the data analysis question from a user and we reason about it and be like, okay, if we move these things around, it will be faster. That's pretty useful, I would say. Persistence. You know, like the original rationale for building data management systems back in like the 60s was that everybody was, was running around on these text file zoos with like hand-coded hand programs. And then if you think about like Python programs on CSV files, that's like exactly the same problem. But data management system, uh, they provide persistence and you know, you know, it's clean changes of data with transactions and such. So that's nice. Um, and of course, there's efficiency. Like we, this is a field that I sort of grew up in, data management research has spent a gazillion years in you know, making things fast. And so we thought maybe there's a way of kind of working on the bad a bit and then preserving the good. And another way of looking at it is this, um, that I like, uh, that I like uh, looking at it is, is this um, burger thing here, right? Where the thing that caused the problems or caused the frustration was that nobody had looked at sort of the end-to-end -end user experience of data systems. Everybody had been sort of hyper-focused on the engine, like the meat, the patty, or if you want, like the veggie thing, doesn't really matter. Everybody had been focusing on that, and nobody had really looked at the end-to-end -end experience. So Mark and I, you know, sitting there going like, okay, we have to do something. The world hates us. Uh, we have to come up with something new. We were trying to think of ways in which we can overcome the source of frustration and preserve, like, the, the good things. And that is what led to DuckDB. So, DuckDB is a data management system. It's very classic, you know, think database, people call it. Uh, it's built from scratch. We brought it together with now many more people because the team has grown quite a bit. Um, it is, I will explain, it's an in-process data management system, management system, a lot like SQLite. 
Um, and it's built really to give you a very, very hard, uh, fast, state-of-the-art execution engine, so you get a very high efficiency, together with all the features that make data management systems nice, like persistence. Um, and the best thing is it's free, so it's MIT licensed, you know, you can just use it. The question we always get, why is it called DuckDB? It's because I'm even crazier than people think, and I just used to have a duck. That's it. <laughs> Um, let me go a bit about sort of the things that make DuckDB special. So first is simple. We found that a lot of frustration of people using data management systems came from the fact that they're terrible to install, set up, maintain, you know, get, get going with. So if anybody has ever installed Postgres and had to edit this funky file to actually allow your tool to connect, you will know what I'm talking about. Um, so DuckDB is simple. It's, it's, it's meant to be extremely simple to use. So and one key component of simple to use is that we found was that in process is really something that allows simplicity. So if you have ever used SQLite, there is no like database server. You know, people think about this two-tier system, but it's not there. It's SQLite is just in whatever process you have. It's even built into Python. Um, DuckDB is the same way. The data management system runs within whatever process you're in. This can be a Python process, this can be, God forbid, an R process. It can <laughs> can be Java, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever, it, matter. it can run in your Tableau, for fuck's sake. Um, it, but it also has means that in process has this really big advantage. If you're sitting in the same address space, the same process as the thing you're kind of working with, then you have a very efficient data transfer because there is no transfer. You just, you know, look at the pointers in memory. I'm going to show this in a demo in a bit. Another thing about simplicity is that we have no dependencies, like there is no there is no dependencies in DuckDB. Like, you just do pip install DuckDB, and it's not like downloading, like, war and peace from, you know, from PyPy. Uh, it's just like, boop, that's it. It's like 20 megabytes binary or something like that. And this is, of course, a lot of work, right? Like, you have to, if, you're not, if you can't, like, use other people's stuff or have to sort of work around that, it's a lot of work. But we did that, so you don't have to suffer. Um, it runs anywhere, in like, Mac, Linux, Windows, who cares? Um, and it's actually getting quite popular. We have about uh, 1.5 million downloads a month at the moment from PyPy alone, and that's only one of the platforms that we use. But simple doesn't mean it's like some simple thing like SQLite that, they, I don't know, doesn't understand types or something like that. It actually is quite feature-rich. It has a very wide SQL dialect. We have transactions, persistence, crazy joins, aggregates, window functions. It can directly read Parquet files. Uh, CSV files and JSON files in parallel and efficient and yada, yada, yada. So it's actually the feature set that you would more expect from more sort of bigger systems like, I don't know, Postgres or, I don't know, anything else like that. And, and again, simple doesn't mean, you know, dumb. Simple means, it can also mean fast. It's simple, but it also is state of the art. And that comes out of our background as being researchers at the CWI in the like, state of the art data manager and research where, like, how can you make these things fast? And I was talking to the team, it's like, okay, how can we explain what makes DuckDB fast? And they were like, it's very simple. Just say, it's magic. <laughs> um, of course, we know that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Um, but you have to think about, like, this way, it's the culminations of decades of research in data management systems. There's, like, tons of PhD theses that whose results have gone into the concepts that make DuckDB fast. And one thing that you can kind of see this with is you, like, you, sh you, you know, run DuckDB with something, and you type a query, and you go, go, and it just goes like, map, <laughs> and uses all. It makes your laptop hot. It's a downside, I have to say. So if you're sitting in the train, you may want to reduce the, you know, the, the, the degree of parallelism a bit. But DuckDB automatically parallelizes everything that you do over all the CPU cores that you have. And this is just on my MacBook, which has like 10 cores these days. But the thing is, what we've learned with looking at the scale-out people like Spark is that blind um, parallelization is not enough really to get good efficiency. You also really need a good efficiency if you're only running on a single core. So we achieved this by, you know, again, being crazy and um, spending a lot of time optimizing individual operators in, in C++. Uh, DuckDB can also use directly your disk if it, the memory should not be enough to complete a specific operation. You know, you can also say, ha, okay, I may be out of memory here, but there's a ton of disk space sitting here, and with the SSDs um, these days, it's not a problem. And this, again, this all happens completely automatically, which, why to the user, it can look like 
magic. And it's free. Um, yeah, we come, out, we, are come out of this, we come out of the same place as Python, so of course it's free, but uh, um, it is free and open source software. We are, you know, we are open source. You can do whatever you want. Python is actually the, I think I would say at this point, the, the, the main sort of, one of the main APIs that we developed DuckDB for. Like we, features that come to DuckDB always will have a, a map way to reach them from the Python API. It is the prime, one of the primary APIs and lots of cutting edge features are coming there first. Um, I will demo one of them later. I also wanted to mention this one really nice aspect of being in the same process, being in process. If you, for example, you're sitting there in your Python shell and you have a ginormous pandas data frame sitting there, DuckDB can directly read that pandas data frame as if it were a table. And that works really well because you're sitting in the same process. Basically, we taught uh, our query execution engine how to interpret the bits on, in memory that make a pandas data frame and we just look at it and, and read it directly into queries. I'll show that in the demo. The same thing also works with arrow tables. So if you have an arrow table or even an arrow stream object sitting there in memory, you can directly query this with DuckDB without having to do any sort of these typical import steps or whatever you do. Okay? So now I'm going to show you a quick demo. Um, uh, I will share the script later so you can, can uh, play this uh, up. So I need to unmirror my screen so you can see what I'm on to. Can you see? Oh. Not yet. Uh, can we um, get the projection working, please? Ah, that's better. Should I do something? No. But it's better than nothing. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, I, can also, I could also try to work around it if you want. Should we do something? I get extra time. While we're doing this, let's, let's take a question there. Has anyone got a question? Yes, okay, thank you for breaking the awkward silence. Thank you, sir, we like you. Very good. No, since you mentioned it works directly with Apache Arrow, I imagine it will work directly with the Polars. Yes. You can, Polars has, can go, can export, it's, it is built on Apache Arrow, so you can basically read the uh, error structures directly from DuckDB, yes, you can. Um. More, more questions, yes, there's a question there. Cool. So did you do something wrong? No, it's all good, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's all good. Well, I want to ask actually, like, uh, how was the transition process from a research project to an actual company? <laughs> you know, like, uh, we see that happening a lot in US, yeah. but like in Europe, this is quite limited. So, well, yeah. what were the challenges you faced there? Um, that's a great question. What were the challenges to go from a research project? It was quite gradual, I want to say, but like the step to um, to go go from like being in this like coddled environment of a research institute to basically running your own company. That was a big step. I, it has happened before in our group. People in data management, they tend to do spin-offs, so it wasn't that there wasn't any. Ah, thank you, Thais. Wasn't any precedent. Great, demo time. Can you read this in the back? Hello back, okay. Um, so I'm just gonna run Python here, and then uh, it's like shocking, I know. Um, import a bunch of stuff. This is the, the usual dance. And then here in this uh, snippet, what I'm generating is a data frame in pandas, just random uh, data of like two million rows. It's not very big, it's like 16 megabytes or something like that, right? Um, and then I'm connecting to Postgres, which is like what many people will be used to when working with databases, and they will be hating it because they will be frustrated. And I'm not doing also a connection to to DuckDB here, and then for unknown reasons, no, for reasons only known to the Pandas uh, maintainers, I also have to use the SQL Alchemy thing here. Um, and now let's just run some sort of very basic timings. Um, I'm gonna use the Pandas to SQL thing, which basically writes a data frame to a, to a table in the target system, so this is writing to Postgres. And now we can do another question. <laughs> I was joking. It should complete. 
There we go, 15 seconds. So this is not a particularly small, uh, huge data set, but it took 15 seconds. Now, I told you all about the miracles of in-memory. Um, <laughs> two milliseconds with DuckDB, okay? And that is actually not, that's no trickery there. This is actually written to disk and whatnot. Like, this is two milliseconds. Um, because it's only 16 megabytes. And like, how long do it takes, takes it, does it take to write 16 megabytes to disk, right? Not 15 seconds. Um, and now we can do the inverse. We can, again, use the pandas feature to read a table from a Postgres database here. And it's 1.5 seconds, a bit faster. But you will not be surprised to see that uh, DuckDB, again, is much faster. And the nice thing is, like, I, I had to scale these numbers so I don't have to wait here for 20 minutes until something is done. So obviously, as you make the data set bigger than 16 megabit, megabyte, God forbid, this will be more pronounced. Um, so now, um, what I also want to show is a kind of a neat trick that we made, where if DuckDB is running in your Python shell, you actually don't have to import the data at all. I mentioned we can directly read pandas data frames and error tables. So, and, and you don't even have to register them, because what we can do is when you use a table name in a SQL query, like so, for example, um, select min g from some df. Like some df is not a table in DuckDB. We haven't created that table. But it exists as a variable in your Python environment. And we will look at your Python environment when we're looking for tables. We'll find the data frame, read it, and basically go, OK, you want to have the minimum value. Fine. Here is two point some milliseconds. So that's really convenient because you can kind of get back and forth between data frames and SQL-like sort of interactions. OK, so now I want to continue with my slides. And I'm not going to do the presenter display because that's, um, that's going to muck with us. Uh, how am I on time, by the way? You're good, you're good. How much? So you've got another five minutes. Perfect. OK, great, thank you. Um, so one more thing that I want to talk about, and I know this is like super cliche, and I just wanted to do it. One thing that we've also noticed in data management while you know, doing research in data management systems is that people use like these ginormous hammers like distributed systems, like you know, a Spark cluster with 50, bucket, 50 boxes or something like that, to crack like these tiny, tiny nuts of data problems, like you know, a 15 meg 50 megabyte parquet file or something like that. And it's, I think I get it. People don't think about that a lot. But I feel like, A, this costs money. Uh, and B, I feel like you know, using more resources than necessary in this day and age is not really a good look. So, but I understand that people are used to their APIs, and people are kind of, you know, they, they have their mode of operation, and it works for them. And it's, it's, it's a lot of effort to learn a new API, like if you told your team tomorrow you need to stop, start using DuckDB, and they're like, but yeah, but then you, know, you need to stop giving us tasks for four weeks before, before we have to learn this thing. Um, so we have been working on solving this problem. <laughs> Project name DuckSpark. And what DuckSpark is, I will show you in another demo, OK? So let me, let me restart this. Um, OK, so now I have another demo. Yes. And I'm just going to run through you through a tip, very sort of normal PySpark data analysis script. OK, so we are just going to import uh, PySpark. And then we're making another 2 million. For some reason, 2 million is the magic number with these old things. Uh, data frame, like it looks, it's random numbers. It's very, very un like unexciting. Um, and then I'm, using, I'm doing the usual dance of pulling up a local Spark cluster. OK, it's doing warnings. It always does that. Um, <laughs> and then I can basically tell uh, Spark to take my local data frame and make a, a magic Spark data frame out of it. And if you ever use this API, you kind of know that this is like a lazy data frame. So now I have this uh, Spark data frame. OK, and now I can do things with it. So here is the Spark API. I can say, show me what it is in there. OK, more Java warnings. Um, I can also run SQL queries, because in, in Spark, of course, they have a SQL en uh, sort of engine. And you can basically run like queries like this one, where you say, oh, give me like the, you know, the group count on these random numbers, which is very, you know, it's not very useful. But, um, and I can look at the result and see that more warnings, OK, and see like the counts of these numbers. It's not, it's, you have seen this, you have seen SQL queries before. The nice thing about these um, 
the Spark API, the PySpark API, though, is that you also have this lazy API where you can construct queries, right? So if you're doing it interactively, you can be like dot filter, dot group by, dot blah, blah, blah. And it's all lazy, and it will be only evaluated. Um, again, this is, oops, we get to laugh at my typing skills. Uh, it only will be executed whenever you want to look at the results. Or top end in this case, yeah. Okay. So far, so good. So now what we have done is I take the script and I change this variable fast to true, okay? <laughs> yeah, I know it's mean. Um, <laughs> and then what happens, oops, let me actually restart this. Sorry. Um, Python, because I don't want to. So now I have, I generate the same data set again. Okay, fine. So we have the data set. And then I'm using the same exact Python code to do things, only that I don't see the Java warnings. That's odd. <laughs> and it's somehow snap here. And I can do the exact same thing. So I'm copying, just copy pasting the exact same code. Uh, and the result rendering looks suspiciously better. <laughs> and I can also use the exact same um, Spark sort of dot filter dot group by and so on so APIs um, to, to construct queries. And again, I see this weirdly look different looking um, result. So that, in a very sh nutshell, is DuckSpark. And so what DuckSpark is, is basically our um, attempt of like lowering the barrier for people coming from PySpark to go try DuckDB without having to require, without having to spin up distributed systems. It can run right there on your laptop. It can run on a VM, whatever you prefer. It's API compatible. We're aiming for like a full Python API compatibility. So that basically means if you have a script that runs in PySpark, you can just use it on, on DuckDB and it will just run. We are, we are working on like expanding this to the full API. This is not yet in DuckDB, so you can't use it yet, but it will be soon. Hence, it's a preview. Um, and we're really excited to see what people can come up with. So, to sum up. Perfect. Um, I was talking about DuckDB and in-process uh, analytical data management system, so like things like SQLite, but then for analytics. It's simple, it just installs like with pip install. It's really, like has a lot of features, it's very fast, and it's free, and you get to choose all four. It's very deeply integrated with uh, Python and Pandas and Arrow and all these things. We also have features to go like from DuckDB to TensorFlow or from DuckDB to uh, PyTorch in order to kind of go with ML workflows. It wasn't time to talk about that. Um, yeah, as I said, people install DuckDB. We have a Discord channel so you can talk to us. Um, we are on X. <laughs> <laughs> Seems so wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, yeah, happy to take questions. Thank you.